How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we are processing some chickens with this $800 canister Damascus knife. This is a hunting knife from Baby Moon Blades. No, I did not buy this. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have money for that. Um, but this is a gorgeous hunting knife from Baby Moon Blades. This was generously gifted to me. I am very lucky that I get things like this donated to the channel for testing. But guys, we've got some small chickens here that we're gonna be processing for dog food. I'm gonna lower you guys down. The dogs are out here. You're gonna hear barking, growling, the typical chaos. Let's get to it. This is exactly what it was made for. So I thought this would be fun to film for you guys. But we have four pasture raised little chickens here. Um, I need to cut them up for dog food. As you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, my dogs eat a raw food diet. It's the healthiest diet for them. Um, you do give or take 80% meat, uh, like muscle meat, 10% bone, 10% 10% organ. Do not follow any of this unless you do your research, obviously, but I've been raw feeding for 10 years. So uh, part of what we feed them here is raw chicken and we process it up. As you can see, Nugget is very excited. She wants some. But out of a whole chicken, I can get a number of things because I separate the different sections here and I can feed them in different meals. So I will generally take off the drumsticks and the wings and package those up, then split the, the breast up. And it's a good way to utilize the whole chicken and be able to feed separate meals. So we're just gonna kind of categorize all of the parts and then we're gonna lay them out in Ziploc bags and freeze them because you kind of get two, um, two really good benefits from doing that. They're getting the raw food, number one, but number two, when you freeze it, uh, you can actually really help them clean their teeth by feeding those raw meaty bones frozen. Again, do not do any of this at home unless you do extensive research because um, there are so many myths out there, you know, like there are so many myths about you can't feed dogs chicken bones. Yes, you can. They just have to be raw. They absolutely have to be raw. They can never, you cannot feed dogs cooked bones, but if they are experienced, you can feed them raw bones. Zee, please. So my dogs have been eating like this their entire lives. Uh, Zadie, this crusty thing that will growl the whole video, she's nearly 11 years old and she's eaten raw her, basically her whole life. Um, we've never had a problem feeding the bones because like I said, this is how dogs eat in the wild. You know, this is how wolves eat. This is how dogs all over the world eat. They can absolutely eat raw bones um, as long as it's done properly. So, this is also kind of giving you a look into how my knives are used. Um, I think this is kind of what made the channel take off was the fact that my knives get used before they're reviewed. Instead of just like opening a box and then giving a full review, this is what I put my knives through before uh, telling people to buy them. And this is a great, this is a great example of that. Um, I do a lot of this, guys. We have five dogs in the house that all eat this way, you know? Um, I do a lot of this. The game processing, the food processing. This chicken back will get frozen on its own. And I'm not, you know, this is not like necessarily the most clean and proper way to do this, but it doesn't really matter because it's all getting fed anyway. Um, you know what I'm saying? So we just kind of crude, crudely process this food for them because it's all going in their bellies anyway. But as you can see, this, this hunter here from Baby Moon is just doing an incredible job with this task. Very, very good so far. I haven't used the baby moon for 
any game processing or anything yet. It's all been EDC tasks, which it did really well at, but um, this is definitely way more up its alley because this is what it was made for. But let me know how you guys are doing, how your weekend was, what you're carrying, the usual. Um, I know this is kind of like a nice chill video, but again, I think it it's just a really good way to show how these knives can perform doing what they were meant to do. This is a fatty one. But if you guys are interested in raw feeding, I highly suggest doing your research. Um, not a lot of vets will support it because they are uneducated and they also don't make money if you're feeding your dog a raw food diet because a lot of vets you'll notice are sponsored by Hills or Purina or Royal Canin or whatever. Um, so you got to remember a lot of vets are not going to enjoy if you feed raw because they're not making money off of the crap food that they are supposed to market to you that um, essentially kills your dog faster. <laughs> Gotta remember that. There they go. There's our first episode. Although they're gonna be a little more quiet because they're running back to the food. And our stuff is blown everywhere. It's been very windy here in New Hampshire lately for some reason. Very, very windy. It's chilly today too, man. Hey, 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 hey. No, thank you. A lot of people ask too if raw feeding is expensive. It's actually cheaper than kibble because you're not paying for that processing. You're just buying the raw product. And also, um, you feed way less, honestly, on raw because you're, you're just feeding a, a wholesome item as opposed to something filled with a bunch of crap. And you can feed everything, even the, the gizzards and all of this stuff. But, you know, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to uh, not do this unless you have done your research. It's something you really have to be educated on before you do it. Sadie, stop. But as you can see, we're kind of, you know, these bones are, uh, they're, they're nothing, they're nothing crazy. They're not, they're not super hard, but we are kind of cutting around and hitting rib bones and some, some more dense bones and stuff. So we'll see how it, how it does. So you definitely are hitting bone. I know I'm kind of going in and out of frame here, guys. My my apologies, but they're very slippery. But so far, this Baby Moon Hunter is extremely comfortable to use, really easy to maneuver through my my hands here um like very easy to manipulate i guess i should say really really enjoying it
Also, I do get the dog's blood work done just to make sure that they're all healthy and uh, they have some of the best blood work the vet has seen. So don't worry about that. There's always gonna be keyboard warriors that don't like the raw stuff. Enough. Sadie is very spicy, if you didn't notice. <laughs> very, very spicy. Sadie, come on. Good lord. But yeah, this is all we're doing is just processing up some, some chicken for the dogs. And it's kind of funny because we we all kind of eat essentially the same way. I eat very, in a very similar manner to the dogs, like kind of just meat, fruits and veggies. Granted, there's beer thrown into my equation. Dogs don't drink beer, but other than that, <laughs> it's pretty similar. Um, I will say, if you guys want to learn a little more about like raw feeding and the benefits and just how it kind of works and stuff, um, my buddy Chad has a YouTube channel with well over a hundred thousand subs and he has um lichen shepherds and he has a very cool channel where he has a pack of lichen shepherds and he films the raw feeding with them and the hikes with them and stuff and he explains the benefits of raw feeding and um his channel is hopefully i get this correct first 508th airborne he is a veteran he has a whole pack of dogs and he's um, a really cool guy with a really cool channel. I, I respect him very, very much. He has helped to educate hundreds of thousands of people. So if it's something that you're curious about and you want to learn more, I highly suggest going and checking out his channel because it's, it's really neat. Stuff's gonna blow away soon, man. This knife is doing absolutely incredible. Um, this is the first time I've ever used such an expensive knife on the channel. The, the most recent one I ever used and still own was the Mike Morin Moran whatever it is, um, that $750 custom uh, single blade jack, something like that, that was gifted to me. We used that on the channel, and I still have it, obviously, but that was the most expensive knife I had ever used up until now. I could not believe that they sent this to me, and I didn't even, like, know them. They just found me through a, a, a mutual friend, Dusty from Duckhead Forge, and I guess... That's kind of how it came to fruition, and they asked if they could send me a blade. I was like, absolutely, but I didn't know that they were sending this thing. My goodness. I have never used such a beautiful thing in my life. And it just does so well at what it was intended to do, which is really neat. All right, last one here. And I'm sorry that this angle is kind of poor, guys. You are currently sitting on the compost bin. Uh, that's all I really had to set you guys up on. So, sorry for the, the unprofessionalism here. But hey, we aren't professional, are we? This thing just goes right through it all. This does have a, um, a convex edge, which obviously makes sense for this type of knife. Um, so it's not like a good cardboard cutter, but it's not really meant for that. Any other like general EDC tasks, it's great. And then obviously this is like where it shines, is doing what it was actually intended to do, you know?
But yeah, um, let me know down below how you guys are all, how you're all doing, how you're holding up, what's new in your world. Also, for anyone that was wondering about the video from the other day about me not using production knives, um, I, I don't think I clarified in the video. I meant production bushcraft knives. Um, I was not talking about Benchmade. Benchmade did not even cross my mind. I know that the video applies to Benchmade, but that's not who I was talking about. Everyone thought I was. I was not. I was not even... I've never had a bad experience with Benchmade. Not to say that people haven't. I'm very well aware that they have, but I've utilized their warranty service a number of times and they've i've never had a bad experience with them I'd, i think they're overpriced absolutely and they're not my jam anymore but that's not who the video was aimed at it was actually aimed at bushcraft production knives and production companies that's who i was talking about just for a little clarification if you've made it this far I'm sure there's like at least one person watching this that's like, oh my god, she's slaughtering that thing. Like, what a mess of a process. <laughs> like I said, if it weren't dog food, I'd be a little more careful with the whole thing. But you should see how quick they eat this stuff. It's like they just inhale it, you know? Um, that, it's better when I freeze it. But like, these dogs are, they don't give a crap. They're just like food fiends it's gone within a matter of seconds That did absolutely phenomenal. That was really nice. Very, very impressed with that. It's a, uh, it's not every day that you get like a custom, you know, handmade in-house Damascus knife that does perform, you know what I'm saying? Like a, like a lot of stuff out there is for looks. They're like beautiful pieces of art, but they're not necessarily useful. Uh, this, this baby moon is a beast. That was a very, nice process and i you gotta remember guys i've been doing this a few times a week every week for nearly 10 years you can you can't even imagine how many how many um chickens and turkeys and and goats and cow legs and stuff i've processed with knives i mean it's been a lot so it, you really get a feel for when a knife is good at this stuff and when it's kind of crap and this, that did very, very well. That was, that was a breeze. Didn't really have to put any muscle behind it. Just very nicely went through all that stuff. No, no issues at all. That was really beautiful. So I'm just putting the breast meat in a bag here. Like I said, it all kind of gets frozen up and I feed it all frozen to clean their teeth. Don't have to cook it or anything. All right. Do a quick check to see if we've received any edge damage or anything, any chipping. 
Nothing. Not that I can feel. Nothing. Really nice. That was awesome. Put these little gizzards in a small bag here. If I can find one. That was really cool. Um, Adam and Lisa, I know, and Kara, Kara, however you pronounce that. I think it's Kara. Um, I know you guys will be watching this because I'm going to tag you in it. Thank you so much for this. What a, what a beautiful gift from some incredible people, incredible makers. Um, guys, please check out Baby Moon Blades. Definitely the, the most high-end product I've ever shown on the channel. I know not everyone can afford an $800 knife. And, and that is not all that they make, guys. It's not like all the stuff that they pump out is $800. This was very much special made for me. They, they make knives that are 300 and something dollars, like... And they work with a whole bunch of steels, so you don't have to get canister Damascus. You can get ADCR V2 or 52100 or um, 8670, stuff like that. But um, guys, thank you so much for watching that. That was a that was a pleasure to use. What a gorgeous blade doing exactly what it was intended to do. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. I'll see you guys on the next video. I love you so much, fam. I especially love you guys over at Baby Moon Blades. Adam, Lisa, Kara. I'll see you guys soon. Love you so much. Take care.